stage. All right, good afternoon, everyone. It's wonderful to um, have you um, attending in attendance of our session here today. And uh, we have a full house, so we're really excited about it. Um, I want to, um, we're just gonna advance the slide here. Wonderful. And so this is just a quick uh, kind of synopsis of what we're going to attempt to accomplish today. Um, and what you're gonna note is that um, we're gonna give you an update on the work since last year. And so what this is really about is kind of where have we been with this project? Where are we now in the present? And where are we headed? And most importantly, uh, we wanna have a dialogue with you about where we are headed. So thank you so much. You could advance the slide there, Leslie. So what we want the group to know is that um, the work comes out of the Northwest Trans Transitions region. And uh, we wanna um, just be thankful to them, thankful to the Northwest region for um, initiating this project uh, essentially two years ago and for their continued funding support um, for us to be able to perform this work. The work started out in the Northwest region as a way for us to enhance the, the quantity and the quality of um, instances of partnerships uh, with DevEd and adult basic education. And it has now expanded to a statewide effort. And we are grateful to Northwest region for number one, getting us started, and number two, continuing to invest in this um, effort going forward. Um, what you're gonna see on that, if you could go back to that slide, that would be best if you could. I just wanted to also comment that um, this um, work ties into the Minnesota State Developmental Education Strategic Roadmap. And in that roadmap, there were a couple of things that were, um, a couple of instances where adult basic education was identified. And we thought this was a great opportunity for us to tag into um, that work and to um, sort of gain some attention um, with the work that we're doing in support of DESR objectives. So you can advance the slide, Leslie. So um, let's just talk quickly about what's been going on. And in our first year, we documented national best practices. That was two years ago in the redesign and delivery of developmental education. We documented our practices in the Northwest region where we have a number of successful efforts underway, but we want more of those to occur. And we identified the most deterring barriers and success factors regarding expansion of those partnerships. Um, we identified the data being collected by the existing partnerships to measure impact on student outcomes. And then we started ongoing conversations with many groups, including MDE and the system office um, regarding this, these partnership practices. And if you could advance it, there we go. Um, now, what's really exciting is through various discussions and presentations, we discovered a large interest in this particular topic of partnership. And last year we launched an affinity group, um, which essentially had 80 um, practitioners evenly split between the Minnesota state system, both faculty and administrators and the ABE system, both teachers and administrators. We had four meetings. The con content was lively, it was, it, it was exciting, and it was beneficial. So beneficial that we have this overwhelming desire to continue with the affinity group in this coming academic year. And I would just comment that if you have an interest in uh, becoming a part of the affinity group or learning more about it, um, there's some contact information there for you to reach out to, to me. All right, another um, really excellent outcome was that we had this desire to take a look at a, a developing or arriving at the development of some type of common data set that we could use across the state that would help describe, 
and sell the value proposition of uh, partnerships in which um, we were um, advancing really successful student outcomes. And so I want the group to know that we have um, this, uh, this data or this information available to anybody with our group or that's watching today that has an interest in seeing what are those things that we're interested in measuring um, and that we're going to be continuing with this, um, this work in the coming year. And with that, I'm gonna now hand it off to my partner who I love to work with, and that's Leslie um, Blicker. And Leslie is going to kind of walk you through um, what's going on right now and what does the future hold for us? Hey, Leslie, you are muted. Yeah, Leslie, you appear to be muted. There so. we go. Okay, believe it or not, I really do know technology. My apologies. Um, one of the and then things- then Leslie, it needs to be in present form, please. Yeah, I was gonna say, one of the things I was going to ask is that would it be acceptable to leave it in, in this fashion so that I can pull up the participant list and the chat when I need to? Otherwise it fills up the entire screen and I can't see my slides. Does this work for everyone? If not, I'm happy to, to move it over. Uh, the font's a little small. Let's yeah, you know what? If you can put it in present and then maybe Russ can work on the chat or Susan. Right, that yeah, chat. that oh, sounds good. That so why don't you monitor? Sure, okay, well, sorry for that little hiccup. Um, so, and let me just move, uh, there we go. Um, I'm going to pick up where Russ left off and uh, continue on with what we were accomplishing this past year. Um, in the first year, we had identified the partnerships in the Northwestern region. And then when we formed the affinity group, they said, would it be possible for you to identify all of the partnerships throughout the state? And bear in mind, this means anything from what we call light integration to maybe full on collaboration where ABE is embedded in, you know, into the program, the dev ed program, they, they're co located on campus and maybe even attend um, uh, department meetings. But we found 16 and we did that through a survey with the affinity group members. And so here's uh, what I'd like to ask you to do at this point for everyone attending, um, and you don't have to say anything or put anything into the chat. Now we're gonna ask you in the dialogue portion, take a look and see if you can identify your ABE area represented. There's two slides. I'm just staying on slide one for now. Or uh, if you can see you know, the campus that you might be working with together. And if not, we're going to ask you at the end, uh, is there anyone here who hasn't been represented in these 16 uh, partnerships that we've captured because we're trying to do an ongoing, uh, you know, um, sort of data gathering uh, activity to document how many, um, actually how many Minnesota state campuses may have partnerships. Um, and this is important. I, I hate to linger, I'm gonna go to the next slide. It's important because you'll see in our upcoming year, if we want to try to work uh, with the Minnesota State institutions um, in getting this word out, it's important for some to see just how many partnerships there are or who they might be able to go to, to ask for information or some guidance. So anyway, those are the two slides. I'm gonna go back once just so you can take a quick look. And then again, the second one. Okay, so moving on, uh, the biggest, I think, um, work effort that we spent time on this year besides the affinity group was taking in the information 
that there was going to be almost a, a clear call for a toolkit, some kind of a resource area, be it a web presence or a document, something. So we, uh, Russ and I talked quite a bit and we worked with the affinity group and I see in the participants, some of you are here. So this is not news to you. And these people were, those of you who are in the affinity group were very valuable in giving us some guidance about what we might wanna include in the toolkit. So what we did is we did develop a structure and outline kind of the table of contents, who it would be for, um, how it might get used in a way, although we're gonna do more of that. And we vetted it through a number of different uh, means. Uh, we went to, Julie Dinka was here to MDE. We went to the system office of Minnesota State. We ran it through the affinity group. And then we ran it through the regional partners as well. Um, so many eyes have sort of been on the notion of the structure of this. But this summer, we ended up writing it. And it's not complete yet, but we called upon uh, several of the partnerships that we knew that were in existence and asked if in a team for fashion, they would be willing to write certain sections. So we had five teams working on all kinds of sections of the toolkit. And right now I'm in the process of collating all of what people have sent. It was due last Friday. Everyone was great. They got involved. We asked there to be participation from the ABE side, as well as the faculty side. We wanted to make sure that voices of both sides of the table were being heard. And we also have the voices of some of the managers and administrators, again, on both sides. So we're excited about what's coming in. It's gonna be chock full of really tips and guidance for people who wanna get started. Um, and, and also if we are going to talk to, we're hoping to talk more to some of the campus deans or you know, deans of students, you know, the people who might have some um, responsibility for reporting improved dev ed results. We hope to get the toolkit in their hands so that they're able to see what this model can bring to the table. Um, and trust me, the toolkit has all kinds of uh, benefits. We, we, we've got the, what we call the value proposition, the benefits to students uh, by having ABE work in the school together with faculty member. So uh, that's really chapter one uh, to a certain degree. So we're hoping to get it published by mid-September and Atlas, I should go back here. Uh, we've been working with Atlas who has been very gracious in uh, saying that they'll find an appropriate place uh, for us to have a web presence. Um, we're not sure yet if it'll be a series of web pages or a document, but might be both so that people can download it. Uh, but we're going to work on designing that in the next couple weeks. And just so you know, the chapters, and I'm looking at the time, the chapters of the toolkit, uh, we have a context. And that context, of course, includes how do you use the toolkit? Who is this for? Why on earth are we talking about redesign of developmental education? Uh, how does the ABE model fit into it? And then we go right into, okay, if you want to get started, how would you do it? Who contact, who initiates? Which side of the house initiates? How do you initiate? Who do you talk to? How do you find champions for it? And then in chapter two, and there's a whole lot more than just those questions, but chapter two, we really wanna talk about the levels of collaboration, sort of the modes for teaching, because that seemed to be one of the biggest questions people had. Um, and uh, finally, not finally, but chapter four, we have the need for data. And we're gonna talk about the common data set that Russ had talked about and hopefully um, <clears throat> making the case for why we'd like everyone to be able to collect that data. And the data, we're hoping for data that goes beyond a single course if possible, um, just following the student through the program. And then we have a whole chapter on success stories from the field. And we've got those five partnerships uh, have shared, how did they get started? What are they doing? Um, so in a sense, the toolkit first gives you the information for people who might be new to it. And then uh, the success stories is a chance for them to reflect and see how these partnerships kind of applied many of the principles and practices that are in the toolkit. Um, and 
uh, here's our work plan for this coming year. Clearly, we want to publish the toolkit and promote the use of it. As Russ mentioned, we'll continue the affinity group. And um, Gail had mentioned that I think the link for the affinity group site might not be working. I, as I recall, it might not be a public link. It, uh, I may have to add people. So what I would suggest is if anyone's interested in joining, definitely contact Russ. Russ will tell me, and then I'll make sure people can get into that affinity group website. Um, I've already mentioned number three, which is instilling data practices using that data set. And Russ and I are proposing, again, through support of the Northwest Consortium, um, we'll be the first line of support for those wanting to work through the toolkit. I mean, we are clearly hoping, if you look at number five, I have the word desire to stimulate some expansion. We have more than a desire to stimulate. We are really hoping this will make a difference. You know, many people came to the table to talk about it through the affinity group, but now we're at the so what part. How, how or who can make the greatest impact or what can make the greatest impact on getting some of the additional colleges to think about forming a partnership or to even expanding partnerships within a single school. And we're hoping to sponsor some webinars as well. Now that's a big push of information in uh, 15 minutes. And at this point, I'm gonna first ask uh, Russ if he has anything else to add to this. And then what we're gonna do, we will open it up for dialogue and we have a series of questions for you. So take it away, Russ. Yeah, Leslie, I don't have anything more to add. You did a fabulous job as usual. And so I think what we are interested in, this is your session, folks that have come here, you've come here for a variety of reasons, and we're interested to know what kind of questions you might have about what you just heard. Any questions or comments, if you've been participating and you want to make a comment, feel free to do that as well. You can do that either by unmuting yourself um, or putting a comment in chat. And I'm happy to watch the chat now, Russ, if you okay, want. Okay, and I'm kind of looking at sure. here as well. We have somebody that said they'd like to add Hennepin Technical College. Um, we're always happy to do that. So I think, Michelle, um, if you could maybe leave your email address as well, that would be great then we'll know how to reach out to you to talk a little bit more about that. So come on, I know you've got questions out there or comments. Something brought you here, some curiosity and interest to, to get something started, perhaps an interest to take something you already have underway and enhance it, make it better. Um, what are people's thoughts out there? Well, while we're waiting, Russ, I'm going to say um, we did, this is just a little humor while you're gathering your thoughts, right? So the pregnant pause segue. Russ <laughs> and I, once we found out it was 45 minutes, we did such a great job to end it in 15 minutes. So. <laughs> so now we're really looking for you to, uh, to talk to us, but maybe Michelle can tell us a little something about the partnership with Hennepin Technical. I'd love to hear about that. And don't forget, you may have to... Right. Can you hear me? Hi. This is Michelle. Okay. Yes, hi. So um, our instructors on our adult options in education is where I'm from. It's in Hopkins, also St. Louis Park and Minnetonka. Our instructors teach medical terminology, which are credits through Hennepin Technical College. So this last year we had students finish that. I walk them over they filled out their applications for free and then got the credit on their transcripts. 
We also have that partnership with them for our child development associate, and that's a fall and spring three credit um, class that goes towards their degree in child development associate. So I'm hoping that's what you're talking about here and that's what we're doing. Uh, I guess what I, I'm a little newer to the position there in the college and career counselor. Um, we are gonna be developing a college readiness course this year. And it would just be nice to see that get college credit as an elective credit, whether it's North Hennepin Community College, Hennepin Technical College, Normandale, any of that, because you know we're hoping that that curriculum aligns with their developmental preparedness class that they give college credit to their students for. Mm -hmm. So that's where we're at at this point. So hopefully that's what you were expecting to hear from me. Well, it, it actually, Michelle, is uh, uh, it's, it's even beyond from an evolution. It, it's sort of beyond uh, in, in, a, in a great sense uh, what we're talking about because what, what we've also talked about beyond um, developmental education and getting into the same classroom with students that are in non-credit bearing courses is to get them into what you've just described, which is this ability to take a credit bearing course um, and to receive some credits and some, you know, some type of, um, you know, preparedness for a particular career. So the fact that you've got partnerships happening at, on the pathway level is exceptional. It's impressive, and um, and and so what maybe we would ask you to look into is what, if anything, is happening really in uh, the developmental education classroom as well. And so, um, and maybe you have an answer to that at this stage or would need to do a little more research. I don't have any answer to that, but yeah. um, that's where I would lean into maybe your, the work you're putting together and- yes give that to our instructors and see how we can pilot that possibly. And I right. like the idea of doing it maybe in a room on their campus with our instructors to start. That's just my little fantasy world, but sure. yeah. But anyway, it's a great session. I'm looking forward to see the work that you've all done. Okay, that's great. And um, let's see, we've got a, other, a few other comments here. Thank you so much, Michelle. I'm just excited to see the toolkit in September. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, we'll have it for you. Um, I can't seem to log into the link, but I think we've got an answer to that, um, that it's um, not a public um, link at this stage, but we can work with you on getting you access. Um, Tracy, thanks so much. I'm happy that um, the um, collaboration is being recognized, and that's HCC Hibbing community uh, college and, a, and ABE in, in her area of the world. I'm hoping to be able to replicate in some of the other locations in my area. Absolutely, Tracy, that's the whole idea. Uh, Judy, let's see, with Susan, you gave her the answer, which is great. Um, let's see if we have anything else. I am interested in being able and being added to the affinity group. Thank you, Judy, we will get you added. Thanks so much, and thank you for noting uh, your co-teaching and dev ed classes in English and algebra, and also co-teaching tech math with Riverland, Riverland Community College in Austin. Uh, we'll, be get, we'll get that added to our mix. Um, and what do we have here? Could ABE classes taught by ABE teachers earn college, students college credits, or, or credit for prior learning. Um, let's see, could ABE classes taught by ABE teachers earn students college credits or credits for prior learning? Has anyone in our group had some experience with that in today's session?
I'm assuming that there are some partnerships uh, that exist um, that where this has occurred, um, but I just, I don't know in particular what those programs would be. So if there's anyone in the room that does have a field, Julie. Uh, I yeah, I was just thinking that generally um, they will not accept uh, credits taught by an adult basic education instructor unless it's been an approved um, articulation agreement. Right. And I believe there's only one uh, ABE consortium that's been able to do that, and that's Rochester. Okay. However, there are there is work being done on um, credit for prior learning. And so a lot of colleges are working on changing their credit for prior learning and in building career pathways and doing this type of work. Um, we're hoping to enable some of the coursework, especially those that end in certificates to receive or, or would be valid um, to apply for credit for prior learning. Thank you, Julie. Well, once again, you, you bailed me out, or bailed Leslie and I out. We appreciate that. Thanks for being here. I also want to just comment, we have appreciated Julie's involvement and Astrid Leiden's involvement in the Affinity Group to help us move this effort forward. Julie, is there anything from your perspective that regarding this work that you would like to uh, share with the group? Not necessarily. I'm just excited that you've been able to get involvement from so many Minnesota state instructors as well and really build those connections with um, the ABE community um, because it never works when it's just one sided. So right. the conversations right. of bringing um, the two entities together is is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Julie. Yeah, we, we agree with you there. And it's a, you know, it's a tough, to, it's a tough road. It, you know, it's a tough mountain to climb. Uh, but when we are climbing together, um, we think that, uh, you know, our chance to get to, a, you know, up the peak increases. And so that's kind of the whole idea. Um, now, um, maybe we could comment, Leslie, a little bit about our, our sort of thoughts uh, for the affinity group this year. I just wanted to comment to the group that we do have, um, you know, this desire to, to get started probably in late September to early October with our first session. What we're looking at is that things would happen. Um, um, let me comment here that they would happen on a Friday morning and a Thursday afternoon. And so for folks that would be involved in the affinity group, we're essentially gonna give you an option of one or the other, and it'll be the same content. And that's sort of the, the process we used last year. And that seemed to work really, really well. All right, so I think um, at this stage- um, Russ, can I jump in for a second? Yes, that'd be great. I would love to get this group's thoughts on number three. Right. We're ready for that. Maybe that's where you were heading anyway. Yeah, that's where I was headed. Yeah. Okay. Would you, uh, well, tell you what, maybe I'll kick off the question and then why don't you add to it? I didn't really introduce myself at the beginning of this session, but many of you who, who I do know, or several of you have heard this, but I retired from the Minnesota state system um, just a year and a half ago at the system office. Now, while I wasn't working in DevEd, um, I certainly know a lot of the people there who, you know, programmatically, and also Julie, I was going to say, I did know the people working on the credit for the CPL credit for prior learning. And if anyone needs any contacts, I can certainly provide that as well. Um, but the one thing I do know, having worked there for 17 and a half years, is I kind of know the structure of the institutions and I know uh, in some ways, some degree, what do I want to say here? When there is difficulty 
kind of making change at a system level or more systemically, it's like, at what arenas do we need to kind of work in to? And um, I know a lot of people say that the greatest of these collaborations start at the grassroots level. No question that a faculty member, uh, I'm sorry, that an ABE instructor who can find a very passionate faculty member at one of the campuses might decide to do this and then levitate it up to their respective managers to kind of either get the funding or the permission. But if we really want to promote the toolkit, we're trying to assess where do we take it? Who do we take it to? Um, and one of my thoughts is if we, we did have a meeting with a number of the academic deans who had responsibility for DevEd or those people who needed to report on DevEd, I think we can do that again. Um, but it might be mean seeing if we could get a meeting of advisors or other people. So for those of you in the field, as you're thinking about where do I go? You know, I mean, we have lots of tips in the toolkit about where do you go, but where do we go to try to get the toolkit, you know, to get it as much traction as possible? So that's a long way of asking my question. Do you have thoughts on that? And Russ, please add. No, yeah. I, I will not. It's well done. ABE newsletter. Now, who, who does the ABE newsletter? I think... I think that's Atlas. I think Atlas, okay. if I'm that's right. Atlas. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. There is a, a newsletter of the Academic and Student Affairs Division at Minnesota State. And we're definitely going to put it in there. That goes to all of the uh, CSAOs, CAOs, deans, you know, um, so it'll be far wide there. Okay. Anything else? Oh, uh, well, um, we are talking about it at this conference. Uh, so that's one way. Uh, the question is what other professional development opportunities might exist out there in the future, regional meetings or what have you, where maybe we could tie into um, communication about those or an opportunity to present or what have you. So that's an idea. Let's see what else we have in chat. All right. Yep, we are meeting with Marisa. Uh, thank you, Sarah. Uh, by the way, good to see you here at today's meeting. Um, yes. And Marisa has also commented to us that beyond the newsletter, they have what's called a news flash, uh, where we could provide some information for that occasionally uh, during the course of the year as well. So that's great news. Um, all right. Anyone else at this stage? All right. Um, hearing well, I have one more question, Russ, okay. and we may ask this of the affinity group too. Again, who's the audience of the toolkit? It may be both ABE instructors and college, either faculty or college administrators. But if we're trying to get the information out, uh, you know what? Let, let me re, let me think again. I think we need to ask some memory. Yeah, for I, okay. Yeah, I think what we have is we certainly have AB, we've heard of ABE instructors and ABE staff wanting to form more partnerships, right? So it seems like the initiation comes from that side. So maybe my question is, is who are we tapping into for ABE to use the toolkit? Since it seems like there's so many ABE people who already want the, is it those who don't know about it yet, who don't know about forming partnerships, or it's the ABE folks who maybe have thought about it but don't know what to do? Is that why we're promoting it through the ABE newsletter? That's my one question. Let me read, and Rock. Okay, there's one. Okay. 
is there is just commenting that it would be appropriate mighty networks platform too yeah and i'm not aware of that uh but thank you for that sarah we'll check that check that out um i just wanted to comment julie and, and you perhaps know this that uh, um, we intend to continue our conversations with Minnesota State, but just learned today that Greg Rethert um, has left his position uh, for a interim position at St. Paul College. And so we'll continue to reach out to Jessica um, at the system office. But our intention too is to reach um, and create some type of avenue of conversation with straight up with the deans. Um, in some fashion that have responsibility for the DESR um, or whoever on campus has the responsibility for DESR and for the deans. Um, the other thing I've asked um, of Greg at this stage, uh, even though he has left, is what's the status of the DESR? Um, because they had to provide a report to the legislature and I don't know if that's public yet, but do you know that, Julie? Um, no, I, I don't. I think they were supposed to be, the plans were supposed to be implemented this past year. And I don't know if they are extending it due to COVID or what the situation is regarding that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so for those of you that aren't aware of the DESR, essentially it was a developmental education strategic roadmap. It was to address really the shortcomings um, of um, developmental education in terms of, you know, the number of students that are, you know, advancing through developmental education um, successfully. That number is, that percentage is um, significantly low. And so they are, the Men's State system is in a position to say, how are we going to change that, that kind of outcome? And so what we want to find out and um, is, of course, now that they've gone through a series of, um, of, of, of practices at each of the campuses, and they have sort of maybe settled on a few outcomes that are desirable going forward, what are those, right? And um, what we're, of course, hoping is that one of the more striking um, examples of success is going to be adult basic education as, as a partner, a potential partner. So uh, if, as we learn more, um, we'll be sharing that, of course, with the affinity group. So make sure you join us at the affinity group level, um, and you'll be the first to hear. All right, um, you had a question about COVID um, instruction, Leslie. Did you wanna post that for people? Uh, yeah, maybe I can just uh, talk about it. Yeah. We, I'll post it. Um, in the affinity group and elsewhere, we asked folks this past year, how were their partnerships working under COVID? with distance learning being the norm for the year. And while we heard a lot about what the difficulties were, our question was, did you uncover any transformative practices if you needed to do uh, your role in a collaborate, for those of you who are in a collaboration with the college, uh, or even in general, did you, did you uncover any transformative practices that were so valuable? It may be that they'll stick. We know that people, you know, it's sort of uh, human nature to talk about where the issues were. And we certainly heard where the issues were, uh, but if that's what you're inclined to post, feel free to put that into the chat as well. Um, we're trying to move people on to say, okay, but did you find any unexpected successes in some means? And we might, Russ, say, well, while people are thinking, maybe the lack of messages here could be that 
it, it was really too difficult to, to get to any kind of transformation. We were just scrambling just, just to find our students and to meet with them just to survive, right? Right, right. Yeah, that's valid. It, it, what's interesting, I think the reason too why that question is asked is that uh, unfortunately we may very well be in the position again where we are maybe in person with students again, and then we have a disruption and then all this, you know, COVID uh, disruption again. And uh, we're back in the business of having to deliver, um, you know, um, via distance. And so if there are practices that we should be lifting up, um, we wanna help identify those and make sure that they're known. All right, um, well, I think, I think uh, we're essentially, let's see, somebody has made a comment here. Let's take a look. Judy is indicating I co-taught and learned better tips for using Zoom to teach dev ed classes. My co-teacher was a pro. Uh, Judy, if you could indicate um, what program you're part of, that would be helpful. And then Russ Julie said that some of the online statewide work around adult career pathways uh, was innovative. And I don't know if she wanted to speak to that. Um, we have a couple minutes uh, left. Uh, Julie, if you want to comment about any of that, that would be great. Sure, I was just referring to uh, uh, some of the sessions that I attended during Summer Institute, and one of them was the work that um, Meg and Callie had been doing up in Sauk Center, Minnesota, working with uh, the healthcare core curriculum and getting credits through Minnesota State um, for the course, which is which is virtual, and then also in South. Uh, west um, region uh, i think they're doing innovative regional work of offering classes online so i am i am curious to know how uh, developmental education and adult basic education relationships might be able to uh, build regionally around like all say all the Minnesota state campuses in the southwest or something something to that regard yeah. um, so I just thought those were some good practices right well they're so good those practices in the southwest that I know the northwest region um, put into its work plan for this coming year uh, the desire to replicate um, that um, that approach, that regional approach with some courses, um, distance courses um, that they plan to get off the ground in similar fashion. So kudos to the Southwest and to the folks in the Northwest that said, we want in on this and uh, we're gonna step forward too um, and um, be able to provide value to our um, area residents. So I think we're, we're nearing the end. Um, if there's anything else at this stage that people would like to quickly comment on, otherwise, I think we're about a minute or less away from uh, wrapping up our session. Um, please put into, into the comments section anything you like at this stage. Uh, Leslie, what do we want to say to our folks that attended today? Well, thank you for attending. We, we hope we provided some you know, useful or valuable information. And uh, we look forward to seeing whoever uh, wants to join in on the affinity group as well. So thank you all, especially for the last session of the day, right? Of the right. whole conference, so. That's right. And uh, stay tuned for, for the toolkit and communication about it. And uh, we hope it, um, it brings you um, value as well. So we wanna thank you for your attendance today and wish you the very best.